It was here that many victims died, trying to escape the chaotic tear gas filled stadium in Malang. Police say the gate was partially open, allowing for a frenzied scrum of hundreds to exit only one or two at a time. And some survivors say the doors weren't open at all. So many dead bodies were scattered at gate number 13. We couldn't get out without moving them. Muhammad was lucky to survive. He got trampled while blinded and asphyxiated by police tear gas. I almost died. I couldn't breathe. It was so hard to breathe because people kept pushing from all directions. Ten senior officers, including a riot squad commander, have been removed from their positions, but public anger and distrust are plain to see. Messages on the stadium walls read, police are cruel, our brothers have been murdered, and investigate thoroughly. Soccer's world governing body FIFA has announced plans to visit Indonesia to make its own assessment of the tragedy. Indonesia is due to host the Under-20 World Cup next year. It's unclear whether FIFA could impose its own sanctions. Across Europe, teams from the Champions League observed a moment of silence for the victims of the stadium disaster. The Arema Football Club in Malang has been fined and banned from hosting matches at home and the team's chief executive and security coordinator are accused of failing to secure the field and promptly unlock the gates. They've been banned from the sport for life. But many questions remain as relatives of those who died come to terms with their loss. Anne Barker, ABC News, Malang.